13 WMAC morning starts now. The sun beginning to come up over Dublin. Going to see rain by the noon hour from Tropical Storm Nicole. Bring wind, rain, and spin up tornadoes to central Georgia today. Everything you need to know coming up. We update you on the U.S. Senate race heading to a runoff and show you our election tracker numbers. We probably put in more hours than most of the sports teams that happen at Baldwin. Uh, some of the bands you see on Friday nights in high school marching band every Saturday go head to head vying for a championship crown. But of course, it's not all about the scores. There's more to it. Stick with us and learn about the world of marching band beyond the football game. Art, a fiery live demo and a chance to endure one of the hottest and coolest events in Macon each fall. I'll tell you all about the fire and ice in this week's scene 13. Well, good Thursday morning, Central Georgia. Right now, you're taking a live look over the city of Dublin. The time is now 6.31 a.m. here on this November the 10th. Thank you so much for staying with us. I'm Wanye Reese. And I'm Caitlin Hank. We're already feeling some of that wind coming in from Nicole. Definitely. And Alex, now is the time to be weather aware and make sure that you have a plan. Yeah, Caitlin and Wanye, that's right. A good idea to have a way to receive weather alerts today and through the overnight hours across Central Georgia as we are going to have the threat for spin-up tornadoes and for gusty wind. 62, the current number in Macon 63 where we're looking live in Dublin 61 in Soperton and 61 over in Montezuma as well this morning. The radar picture quiet as of right now, but just a few moments ago we did get a tornado watch issued to our southeast. That's going to be down along the Georgia coast, but indicative of that first band here being the first wave of the tornado threat rolling into Georgia. There's the center of the storm down near Orlando this morning. Winds at 70 miles an hour made landfall as a cat one there near Vero Beach going to move towards central Georgia through the day today. A high wind warning already in place begins at 7 a.m from southeast to northwest, from Montezuma to Sandersville to the southeast, and then areas to the north. We're going to be looking at gusts upwards of 40 miles an hour. Here's the hour by hour forecast. Again, that spin up tornado threat until tomorrow morning, beginning this afternoon, the damaging wind threat at its peak as we head into the overnight hours. We'll go hour by hour on future view, show you everything you need to know coming up here in just a few moments. There is one race in our state that is going to be moving to the December 6th runoff. I will ask the voters to come out and vote one last time. That's Georgia Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger announcing that Georgia's U.S. Senate race is heading to a runoff. Right now, our election tracker shows Raphael Warnock with a slight lead over Herschel Walker by about 35,000 votes. Neither candidate reached the 50% plus one vote threshold needed to win outright. So they're going to be meeting again in less than a month on December the 6th for a runoff. So we spoke to UGA political science professor Charles Bullock about the race yesterday. Uh, he expects a drop yep. off in turnout on both sides and says getting people back out is the top of mind for both campaigns. Another point, despite these margins, Bullock says Warnock's incumbency may play a strong role. But the record is that an incumbent who is forced into a runoff, if they're leading, as Raphael Warnock is, has a slight advantage, wins about 55, 56% of the time. I'd rather be uh, Raphael Warnock than Herschel Walker. I'd rather be slightly ahead than slightly behind. But as close as it is, this is truly a toss-up that either one of them could win in four weeks. So here's what you need to know about the upcoming runoff. There will be early voting. Depending on your county, it could start as early as November 26th, so the Saturday after Thanksgiving, or Monday, November 28th. If you're requesting an absentee ballot, you can do that now, but it won't be sent until after November the 18th. County election offices should announce their early voting days and time soon. Remember, if you weren't registered to vote by November the 7th, you cannot vote in the runoff. We're taking a closer look at local races heading to a runoff. They include the race for the Macon Water Authority District 2. Candidates Desmond Brown and Lindsay Holiday will face off with each other. Also, folks in Milledgeville City Council District 5 will be heading back to the polls as well. The top two finishers in Tuesday's race are Sean Yamap and Oscar Davis. It's 634. This morning, we now know the names of two people killed when their car crashed and overturned. Corner Leon Jones says it happened on Highway 247. That's near Smiley's Flea Market. Witnesses say a white Honda Accord driven by 57 year old Tommy Smith of Jones County pulled out from Cochran Field Road to cross Highway 247. He was hit by a black Acura RSX driven by 20 year old William Jones of Macon. Both cars rolled over and ended up in the median. Well, we have the funeral arrangements for Mama Louise Hudson. Mama Louise is the H&H &H founder and adopted Almond Brothers matriarch. A wake for her is going to be held at Richard R. Robinson Funeral Home in Pionona next Friday, November the 18th from 6 to 8 p.m. The funeral is going to be the following day, November the 19th at noon 
at Macedonia Church on Eisenhower Parkway. She will be laid to rest at Macon Memorial Park. I figured when I turned on that street, it would be lit up blue. When you call 911, you expect first responders to rush to your rescue. But what if you're on a wait list to get help for you or your loved one? Triage among other calls. That's the case in Bibb County. People are reporting waiting anywhere from two minutes to two hours, even two days. So third tonight at 11, 13 investigates Ashlyn Webb pulls the reports on the stories you've shared with us, and we bring the questions to the sheriff's office on why they're having a holdup. Right now, the time is 636. Of course, the big uh, thing we're focusing on today is Nicole. Exactly. It's our top priority this morning. So, Alex, what do people need to know about when we're going to start feeling and seeing the rain and impacts? Yeah, very quickly, it's going to start southeast to northwest today across central Georgia. In fact, if you walk outside this morning, you're going to notice the wind already. That is from Nicole. Also, the cloud cover, the sun beginning to come up, but we can't really see it here across downtown because of the cloud cover that's in place. That is from Tropical Storm Nicole, which made landfall as a hurricane earlier this morning. The radar picture here in central Georgia is quiet. Head down towards the south. You're going to find rain coming across the state line right now. This is a tornado watch in place here. I expect that will probably be expanded as the storm continues to come inland. The center now just to the south of the Orlando area. We are looking at widespread rain up and down the state today from the Fort Myers area over towards Tampa, Orlando, Daytona Beach. I've seen some really gusty video out of Daytona Beach and then even up towards the Jacksonville area now as we head through the morning hours and coastal Georgia beginning to see it rainfall in Savannah before too long. It winds to 70 miles an hour this morning is as of the 4 a.m. advisory. We'll get another update here in the next few minutes. The 7 a.m. advisory and this is going to continue move towards the west northwest, making this turn into central Georgia tonight as a tropical storm and then weakening down to tropical depression status by the time we get to er or tomorrow afternoon. So we're going to be looking at the impacts beginning at noon today. Here is noon on future view rain already in the area. This is when our spin up tornado threat is going to begin as well. You see that first rain band right there. That's what's going to start it and then that's wave one. We'll get wave two in here later on this afternoon and evening. There's 8 p.m. there on into about 10 p.m. lifting from south to north. Notice the wind still coming out of the northeast here. The center down to the south. The center will be close to central Georgia by tomorrow morning. There's 7 a.m. there as you're heading to work and school. Widespread wind and rain across the area. Uh, this model is putting the center not too far away from Columbus. If this is a little closer this way, maybe the wind's a bit stronger, a little further to the west, maybe a bit weaker, but still looking at that tornado threat until the center passes us in any form. So at this point, you draw a line from west to east. The tornado threat would still be in play to the north, not so much so to the south. So as we're watching this here over the next 36 hours, that's something to keep in mind. The dirty side of the storm, as long as we're on that, we're going to be looking at that tornado threat. Still hanging on to the rain tomorrow morning. There's 10 a.m. there, and then it lifts out of here by about the noon hour. Four high school football games tomorrow night. Still cloudy, still windy, but the rainfall should be over. The wind's not as strong. We're not going to be talking about gusts to 40 anymore, rather 20 or so across the area. You'll see that here on the future view wind gust map. There we are at the noon hour today. Gusts to about 30 across the area. Anytime we get this purple color in here, those are going to be those 40 mile an hour wind gusts. So at this point, we're seeing rain across central Georgia with the gusts upwards of 40 in just a few spots. The center coming ashore again through the overnight hours. There's nine on into 4 a.m. there. Again, the winds, as soon as it comes ashore, not going to be as strong because it loses the ocean, the Gulf of Mexico at this point to uh, feed off of, but still possible as we head into tomorrow morning, isolated gusts upwards of 40 to 45. So a high wind warning in effect for Montezuma Cordial over towards Irwinton and down to Vidalia. This is until 7 p.m. Friday, gusts upwards of 45 miles an hour, gusts to 40 for Taylor, Macon, Bibb, Baldwin, Hancock areas to the north, and that's going to run again until 7 p.m. Friday, and this is uh, a tropical storm warning down to the south there, that orange color there. Also going to pick up some much needed rainfall across the area. This is the good news in this one to two inches of rain, maybe even locally higher amounts in a few spots. That's what that red color is showing, but don't pay attention to the exact locations. Just know that that's going to be the general trend across central Georgia. So it all boils down to this. The spin up tornado threat begins with the first rain ban today in central Georgia this afternoon going to last through the overnight hours and then on into the morning. The damaging wind threat. That's what we're going to be watching for mostly during the overnight hours and of course that flash flooding threat. So here's your seven day forecast. Lots to unpack here. 70 today, 72 for tomorrow, and then the front comes on through mostly dry with the cold front, but temperatures back down into the 50s for highs beginning on Sunday and lasting into next week.